day on March 11, 2021, with a storm blowing around the house. I'm going to read to you from the book More About Paddington by Michael Bond. Chapter 1 The Family Group The Browns' house at number 32 Windsor Gardens was unusually quiet. It was a warm summer day and all the family, with the exception of Paddington, who had mysteriously disappeared shortly after lunch, were sitting on the veranda enjoying the afternoon sun. Apart from the faint rustle of paper as Mr. Brown turned the pages of an enormous book and the click of Mrs. Brown's knitting needles, the only sound came from Mrs. Bird, her housekeeper, as she prepared the tea things. Jonathan and Judy were both much too busy piecing together a huge jigsaw puzzle to utter a word. It was Mr. Brown who first broke the silence. You know, he began, taking a long draw at his pipe. It's a funny thing, but I've been through this encyclopedia a dozen times, and there's no mention of a bear like Paddington. Ah, and there won't be, exclaimed Mrs. Bird. Bears like Paddington are very rare. And a good thing too, if you ask me, or it would cost us a small fortune in marmalade. <laughs> Mrs. Bird was always going on about Eddington's fondness for marmalade, but it was noticeable she was never without a spare jar in the larder in case of an emergency. Anyway, Henry, said Mrs. Brown, as she put down her knitting, why do you want to look up Eddington? Mr. Brown twirled his moustache thoughtfully. Oh, no reason in particular, <coughs> he answered vaguely. I was interested, that's all. Having a bear in the family was a heavy responsibility, <laughs> especially a bear like Paddington, and Mr. Brown took the matter very seriously. The point is, he said, snapping the book shut, if he is staying with us for good, if there was a chorus of alarm from the rest of the family, not to mention Mrs. Bird. What on earth do you mean, Henry? exclaimed Mrs. Brown. If Paddington is staying with us for good, of course he is. As he is staying with us, said Mr. Brown hastily, there are one or two things I have in mind. First, of all, I've been thinking of decorating the spare room for him. There was a general agreement at this. Ever since he had first arrived on the scene, Paddington had occupied the guest room. Being a polite bear, he had never said anything, even when he'd been turned out to make room for visitors. But it had long been thought he should have a room of his own. The second thing, continued Mr. Brown, is a photograph. I think it would be nice if we could have a family group taken. A photograph? exclaimed Mrs. Bird. What a funny thing you should say that. Oh, said Mrs. Mr. Brown, why is that? Miss, Mrs. Bird busied herself with the teapot. You'll see, all in good time, she said and try as they may, might, that was all the others could get from her. Fortunately, she was saved any further questions, for at that moment there came a loud banging noise from the direction of the dining room, and Paddington himself appeared at the French window. windows. He was struggling with a large cardboard box, across the top of which lay a mysterious-looking metal object, with long spikes on one end. But it wasn't so much what he was carrying that caused a gasp of astonishment from the others. It was his general appearance. His fur had an unusually soft golden look about it. And his ears, or as much of them as they could see poking out, 
from underneath the white brim of the old hat were a, bl were a black and shiny <coughs> sorry again in his ears or so much of them as they could see poking out from beneath the white brim of his old hat were as black and shiny as the tip of his nose even his paws and whiskers had to be seen to be believed everyone sat up in amazement and mrs brown dropped several stitches <laughs> Good heavens, spluttered Mr. Brown, nearly spilling his tea over the encyclopedia. What have you been doing to yourself? I've been having a bath, said Paddington, looking most offended. A bath, repeated Judy slowly, without being asked. Crikey, said Nolan Jonathan, we'd better put the flags out. You are all right, asked Mr. Brown. I mean, you're, you're not feeling ill or anything? <laughs> Paddington became even more injured at the excitement he had caused. It wasn't as if he never had a wash. In fact, he had one most warnings. It was simply that he had decided views on bath in particular. Having a bath meant getting his fur wet all over, and it took a long time to dry. I only wanted to look nice for the photograph, he said firmly. The photograph? Everyone echoed. It was really uncanny the way Paddington knew about things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, said Paddington. <laughs> an, an, impo no. <clears throat> an important expression came over his face as he bent down and started undoing. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> okay, deep breath. As he, an important expression came over his face as he bent down and started undoing the string round his cardboard box. I bought myself a camera. There was a moment's silence while the Browns watched the back view of Paddington bending over the box. A camera, said Mrs. Brown at, la at last, but aren't they very expensive? This one wasn't, said Paddington, breathing hard. He stood up, clutching the biggest camera the Browns had ever seen. I bought it at a sale in the market. It was only three and sixpence. Three and sixpence, exclaimed Mr. Brown, looking most impressed. He turned to the others. I must say I've never known a bear with such an eye for a bargain as Paddington. Gosh, said Jonathan, it's got a hood to put over your head and everything. What is that long thing? asked Judy. That's a tripod, tripod, explained Paddington proudly. He sat down on the floor and began unfolding the legs. It's to stand the camera on so that it doesn't shake. Mr. Brown picked up the camera and examined it. As he turned it over, some rusty screws and several old nails fell out. Isn't it rather old? he asked. This is such a typical British way of talking. Isn't it rather old? he asked, without thinking. It looks as if someone's been using it as a, <laughs> as a workbox instead of a camera. <clears throat> Paddington lifted the brim of his head and gave... Mr. Brown, a hard stare. It's a very rare sort, he replied. The man in the bargain shop said so. Well, I think it's super, exclaimed Jonathan excitedly. <coughs> Bags, you take my picture first, Paddington. I've only got one plate, said Paddington decidedly. Extra ones cost a lot and I haven't any pocket money left. So I'm afraid you all have to be in a group. It certainly looks most complicated and rather large for a bear, remarked Mrs. Brown, as Paddington screwed the camera onto the tripod and then adjusted the legs so that they were the right height. Eight. Are you sure you'll be able to work it? I think so, said Paddington. I think so, said Paddington. His voice became muffled as he disappeared underneath the black hood at the back. Mr. Gruber lent me a book all about photography. <laughs>
and I've been practicing under the bedclothes. <laughs> Mr. Gro <clears throat> Help! Mr. Gruber, who kept an antique shop in the Porto Bello market, was a close friend of Paddington and helped him with all his problems. I think it's the storm making me giggle so much. <clears throat> Well, in that case, Mr. Brown took charge of the situation. I suggest we all go on to the lawn and let Paddington take our picture while the sun is shining. And he led the way outside while Paddington bustled around, erecting his camera and tripod. In a few moments, Paddington announced that everything was ready, and he began arranging the group as he wanted them, turning back to the camera every now and then, to peer at them through the lens. Because the camera was so near the ground, he had to put Mr. Brown crouching in a rather uncomfortable position behind Jonathan and Judy, with Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Bird sitting on either side. Although he didn't say anything, Paddington was a bit disappointed with the view through the camera. He could just recognize Mr. Brown because of his moustache but the others were much more difficult. Everyone seemed blurred, almost as if they were standing in a fog. It was strange, for when he took his head out of the cloth, it was quite sunny outside. The Browns waited patiently while Paddington sat on the grass and consulted his instruction book. Almost at once he discovered a very interesting chapter, headed Focus. It explained how, if you wanted nice, clear pictures, it was important to make sure the camera was the right distance away and properly adjusted. It even had a picture showing a man measuring the distance with a piece of string. Several minutes went by, for Paddington was rather a slow reader and there were a number of diagrams to ex examine. I hope he's not too long, said Mr. Brown. I think I've got cramp coming on. He'll be disappointed if you move, said Mrs. Brown. He took such a lot of trouble arranging us all, and it really looks very nice. That's all very well, grumbled Mr. Brown, but you're sitting down. Shh, replied Mrs. Brown. I think he's almost ready now. He's doing something with a piece of string. What on earth is that for, asked Mr. Brown. It's to measure you, said Paddington, tying a loop in the end. Well, if you don't mind, protested Mr. Brown, when he saw what Paddington was up to, I'd much rather you tie the other end to, onto the camera instead of this end to my ear. The rest of his sentence disappeared in a gurgle as Paddington pulled the string tight. Paddington looked rather surprised and examined the knot around Mrs. Mr. Brown's ear with interest. I think I must have made a slip knot by mistake, he announced. Eventually, Paddington wasn't very good at knots, mainly because having paws made things difficult for him. Really, Henry, said Mr. Mrs. Brown, don't make such a fuss. Anyone would think you'd been hurt. Mr. Brown rubbed his ear, which had gone a funny mauve color. It's my ear, he said, and it jolly well does hurt. Now, where is he going? exclaimed Mrs. Bird, as Paddington hurried off toward the house. Um, I expect he's gone to measure the string, said Jonathan. Uh, said Mr. Brown, well, I'm going to stand up. Henry, said Mrs. Brown, if you do, I shall be very cross. It's too late anyway, groaned Mr. Brown. My leg's gone to sleep. Luckily for Mr. Brown, Paddington arrived back at that moment. He stared hard at the sun and then at the waiting group. I'm afraid you all have to come over here, he said after consulting his instruction book. The sun has moved. I'm not surprised, grumbled Mr. Brown as he sat on the lawn rubbing his leg. At the rate we're going it will have set before we're finished.
I never realized having a picture taken could be so complicated, said Mrs. Bird. What I'm not sure about, whispered Judy, is why Pennington bothered having a bath if he is taking the photograph. That's the point, said Mr. Brown. How are you going to be in the picture, Paddington? Paddington gave Mr. Brown a strange look. That was something he hadn't thought of either. <laughs> but, he <did. laughs> but he decided to meet that difficulty when it came. <laughs> oh, he had a lot of other important things to do first. I'm going to press the shutter, he said after a moment's thought, and then run around to the other side. But even bears can't run that fast, persisted Mr. Brown. I'm sure Paddington knows best, Henry, whispered Mrs. Brown. And even if he doesn't, for goodness sake, don't say anything. If he finds out <laughs> he's had a bath for nothing, we shall never hear the last of it. <clears throat> it seems a very long hood, said Mrs. Blurt, looking towards the camera. I can't see Paddington at all. That's because he's small, explained Jonathan. His head to lower the tripod. The Browns sat very still with a fixed smile on their faces as Paddington came out from beneath his head hood. He made some complicated adjustments to the front of the camera and then after announcing he was about to fit the photographic plate disappeared again. Suddenly, to everybody's surprise, the camera and tripod began to rock backwards and forwards in a most dangerous manner. Good gracious, exclaimed Mrs. Bird, whatever is happening now? Look out, shouted Mr. Brown. It comes, it's coming towards us. They all stood up and moved away, staring with wide open eyes at the camera as it followed them. But when it got to within several feet, it suddenly stopped, then turned left and headed toward a, <laughs> towards a rose bush. I do hope he's all right, said Mrs. Brown anxiously. I wonder if we ought to do anything, said Mrs. Bird, as there was a muffled cry from Beddington. But before anyone could reply, the camera rebounded from the rosebush and shot back across the lawn. It went twice round the pond in the middle and then jumped up in the air and several times before toppling over to land with a dull thud in the middle of Mrs. Brown's best flower bed. Good heavens, shouted Mr. Brown. As he rushed forward, my petunias. Never mind your petunias, Henry, exclaimed Mrs. Brown. What about Paddington? Well, no wonder, said Mr. Brown, as he bent down and lifted the hood. He's got his head stuck inside the camera. End of part one. Day on March 11, 2021, with a storm blowing around the house.